Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, by this third lecture, start with the external features of the brain and spinal cord. And my today's topic is external features of the cerebrum. These uh, lectures are for not only for undergraduate students of medicine but also for postgraduate students of medicine because when we will start discussing the internal features we will also talk about the applied aspects of the uh, new nervous system. Now external features of the cerebrum. This is lateral view of cerebrum. Now each cerebral hemisphere has certain borders, certain surfaces, etc. Now number one holes. After finishing with the poles, we will discuss different surfaces of cerebrum. Then we will talk about different borders of the cerebrum. And each cerebral hemisphere is divided into lobes, so then we will talk about lobes of cerebrum. Now each cerebral hemisphere has three poles. That is frontal pole, occipital pole, and temporal pole. Three poles. Now this is later view of the cerebral hemisphere. The anterior end of the cerebral hemisphere is known as the frontal pole. The posterior end of the cerebral hemisphere is known as occipital pole. Now, anteriorly, there is another pole which is known as temporal pole. So, three poles of each cerebral hemisphere, the one which is directed forward is known as the frontal pole, the one which is directed backward is called the occipital pole and there is another pole which is again directed anteriorly which is known as the temporal pole. So these were the three poles of cerebral hemisphere. That is frontal pole, occipital pole, and temporal pole. Then each cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces. Now, what are the surfaces? A 
of each cerebral hemisphere. Three surfaces. Supranatural surface. Medial surface. And inferior or basal surface. Three surfaces. Three poles, three surfaces. Surfaces are supralateral, medial surface, and inferior surface. Now we will discuss these surfaces one by one. Now this diagram shows the supralateral surface of cerebrum. It is convex from before backward and from above downward. The convexity is to accommodate the curved inner aspect of the vault of the skull. So supralateral surface is convex from above downwards and from below downwards. Now this is an other view of the cerebral hemisphere, front view. Anterior view of the cerebral hemisphere, one right and one left. This is right cerebral hemisphere, this is left cerebral hemisphere, and the, in the middle line, these two hemispheres are interconnected by various structures. Now, in the lateral view, this is supralateral surface, and in this view, you can see from here up to here. This is supralateral surface. Why it is known as supralateral surface? Because it is curved and this part is directed superiorly and this part is directed laterally. This is why it is known as supralateral surface of cerebral hemisphere. Then the other surface is the medial surface. Now you can see here in this uh, anterior view. Here there is a fissure which is known as the longitudinal fissure. A deep fissure which partially separate the right and left cerebral hemisphere. Now you can see this is the substance of one cerebral hemisphere and other hemisphere. Partially it is separated by a fissure known as the longitudinal fissure which partially separate the right and left cerebral hemisphere. Now this uh, fissure, longitudinal fissure, it is occupied by number one, a dual fold known as the Fox cerebri. Then the Fox cerebri is a fold of dural matter and next to that is a retinoid matter. So there is a fold of arachnoid matter. Park cerebri is a dural fold. Then the parameter, as I told you, is adherent to the surfaces of the cerebrum between the uh, Recognized matter and pi matter is the subarachnoid space. Now, in this uh, subarachnoid space,
which follow the fox cerebri under the arachnoid metal is occupied by blood vessels, for example, anterior cerebral arteries. So this fissure is occupied by these structures which we will discuss later on in detail. Now we are talking about the surfaces. The next surface is the medial surface. So you can see here, this is the medial surface. Medial surface. And this was superolateral surface. Now I told you that superolateral is convex from above downward and from before backward. But you can see the medial surface is vertical and straight from top up to the upper surface of midline structure. This is medial surface which is straight and flat. Right. Then there is inferior or basal surface. From here up to here. This is inferior or basal surface of cerebral hemisphere. Thus, this diagram shows the superolateral surface of cerebral nosophere. In this diagram, you can see all the three surfaces the superolateral surface, the medial surface, and the inferior surface. Now, we will go into a little detail about the inferior surface of each cerebral hemisphere. This is inferior, also known as basal surface. This is inferior view of the cerebrum. You can see this is right cerebral hemisphere and this is left cerebral hemisphere. Inferior surface. Now you can see this is the frontal pole directed anteriorly. This is occipital pore or posterior pore looking from below. And here this is temporal pore. Now you can see the basal or inferior surface extends from the frontal pore up to the occipital pore. including temporal pole in the middle. Like here, frontal pole, temporal pole, then occipital pole, basal surface or inferior surface, which is not clear in this diagram, but in the inferior view, you can see the detail about the inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere. Here there are midline structures. For example, here is the optic nerve, right and left optic nerves, then optic chiasma, 
and then right and left of the crack. In the middle line. And <clears throat> behind the optic chasma, in the middle line, is tubal sinarium. And behind the tubal sinarium, there are two small elevations. That is mammillary bodies. One right and one left. And then there is a section surface of the midbrain here. So these are midline structures that we will discuss uh, later on uh, in detail. Now you can see this is inferior or basal surface extending from frontal pole to the occipital pole including temporal pole. Now this inferior surface we divide into two parts, orbital part and tentorial part. From frontal pole to the temporal pole, this is orbital part. Of cerebral hemisphere, then from temporal pole up to the occipital pole, this is tentorial part. Of cerebral hemisphere, so you can see here. From here up to here, this is basal inferior surface and it is irregular because here there is temporal fold also. So, this is for, therefore divided into two parts. From frontal pole up to the temporal pole, this is orbital part of the basal surface of the cerebral hemisphere. From temporal pole to the occipital pole, this is the tentorial part. Now I will explain why it's called orbital part and why it is called tentorial part. Now if we cut a section of the skull showing the cranial cavity containing the brain.
your section to the skull showing the cranial cavity. Now, inside the cranial cavity is the brain, cerebrum. Now a section through the skull showing cranial cavity occupied by cerebrum, midbrain, or vena cava, and behind the cerebellum. Then through the foramen magnum, uh, below the foramen magnum, spinal cord starts. Now you can see this is anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and posterior cranial fossa. Now here there is a dural fold, a fold of dural metal, which roof the inferior kind of fossa. A dural fold roof the inferior kernel, posterior kernel fossa. It is a dural fold and it is known as the tentorium cerebellum. So you can see there is an opening in the this tent shaped dural fold called tentorium cerebellum through which the mid passes downwards and below the tentorium cerebellum is the pons medulla brigata and behind this is the cerebellum. And the melanogata passes to the foramen magnum and below the level of foramen magnum, the spinal cord continues. So you can see here, this is frontal pole. This is posterior or occipital pole. This is temporal pole of cerebral sphere. Now here you can see the inferior surface. I told you it is irregular because there is temporal pole also here. This is the inferior or basal surface of the cerebral hemisphere. Starting from frontal pole up to the temporal pole posteriorly. Uh, up to the occipital pole posteriorly and temporal pole is here. Now, you, I told you that the basal surface is divided into orbital part and then tentorial part.
why this part is known as orbital part you can see this is orbital cavity and this is roof of the orbit so from frontal pole up to this notch where the temporal pole start mm -hmm. this part of the basal surface rest on the roof of the orbit this is why it is known as the orbital part of the basal surface of cerebral hemisphere then from this notch which is continued as temporal pole and backwards up to the occipital pole can you see its anterior part is resting on the floor of the middle crepe fossa but its posterior part is resting on the anterior cerebellum a tan shaped dural fold so this is why this uh, this part of the basal surface of cerebrum is also known as tentorial part because it rests mainly on the tentorium cerebellum so this was about the basal surface of the uh, cerebral hemisphere now we talk about three poles frontal pole temporal pole occipital pole each cerebral hemisphere also has surfaces and we discuss the three surfaces that is supraorbital surface medial surface and inferior of the basal surface now the surfaces are separated by borders each cerebral hemisphere has three borders Uh, what are the three borders of cerebral hemisphere? Superolateral border, uh, supramedial border, supramedial border, and infralateral border. And the third one is medial border. So three surfaces are separated from each other by three borders: supramedial border, infralateral border, and medial border. Now, first of all, supramedial border. It starts from frontal pole up to the occipital pole. This red one is the supra medial border. Now, how you describe the supra medial border? It starts at the frontal pole, run upwards, downwards, backwards, and reach up to the occipital pole. Now in this diagram you can see this is the supramedial border. Supramedial border. Therefore you can see the supramedial border it separates the supralateral surface from medial surface. In this diagram you can only see the supralateral surface. Medial surface is on the other side. So to explain it, we can use this diagram also. This is the level of supramedial border. Can you see it is separating the medial surface from supralateral surface? Number one, you should know from at which point it starts and at which point it ends. Second point to remember is that this border separates 
medial surface from supralateral surface. Third important point is that 5 cm in front of the Five centimeter in front of the occipital pole, it is crossed by a sulcus known as the parieto occipital sulcus. From 5 cm from occipital pole, the supramedial border is crossed by a sulcus called parieto occipital sulcus. Because this sulcus is between parietal lobe and occipital lobe, this is why it is known as the parieto occipital sulcus. So, you should uh, know these three points about the supramedial border that it will start from the, at the frontal pole and ends in occipital pole. It separates the supralateral surface from medial surface. Third, 5 cm in front and above the occipital pole, it is marked, it is crossed by a sulcus known as the parieto occipital sulcus. Now come to the infralateral border. This was supramedial, infralateral. It starts at the occipital pole, includes temporal pole. and continue backwards to end at the occipital pole. This is infralateral bar. Of several surface. Starts at the frontal pole, include temporal pole, and ends at the occipital pole. Now, in this diagram, can you see this is the level of infralateral border? Now, the question arises: the infralateral border separate which surfaces? Can you see it is separating the supralateral surface from inferior surface? It starts at the frontal pole and ends at the occipital pole. It separates the supralateral surface from basal or inferior surface. Now, why it is called supramedial uh, border and this is called infralateral border? Can you see this border is superior and medially located? This is why it is called supramedial border. And this border you can see it is direct, it is located laterally and downwards and below. This is why it is called infralateral bar. So these were two bars. Now there is another very important feature to remember about the infralateral bar. That is again 5 cm in front of the occipital pole. Again 5 cm, this is occipital pole, 5 cm in front of the occipital pole, the infralateral border is marked by a small indentation. This is called pre-occipital notch. The occipital nerve. Now, what are the important points regarding infralateral bar? That is, it separates which surfaces, and second, it is marked by a small indentation which may be visible in the brain specimen or may not be, but it is there. This is called pre occipital nerve. So, can you see 5 cm above and in front? of the occipital pole and the supramedial border, it is crossed by parieto occipital sulcus. Then 5 cm in front of the occipital pole, the infralateral border is marked by a small indentation, a small notch, known as the pre-occipital notch. 
Then another feature of this border is now this part of the infrolateral border, which extends from the frontal pole to this notch below which there is temporal bone. This part is called superciliary border. The infrolateral border from frontal pole to this notch, just above the temporal pole, this portion of the infrolateral border is also known as the superciliary border. Now, why it is known as the superciliary border? This is because, suppose this is the eye. And just about this is eyebrows on the surface of the body, eyebrows. So this part of the infrolateral border from frontal pole up to this notch is just a little above the level of eyebrows, cilia. This is why this part of the Infrolateral border is also known as superciliary border. So, infrolateral border, what are its features? It starts from frontal pole, include temporal pole, and ends in the occipital pole. Number two, this uh, the um, inferior uh, infrolateral border at this level, it separates the suprolateral surface from basal or inferior surface. Five centimeter in front of the occipital pole, the infrolateral border is marked by a notch known as the pre-occipital notch. And this entire part of the infrolateral border extending from frontal pole to this notch above the temporal pole is also known as superciliary border. Why? Because it is just above the level of cilia of the eyebrows, hairs of the Eyebrows. So these points uh, you should know about the infrolateral body. Now these two landmarks, the parieto surface and the supramedial border and preoccipital notch and the infrolateral border, they are important landmarks with the help of which later on we will be able to divide each cellular nosocomial into various slopes. This is the importance of these two important features. So these were different uh, surfaces of the cerebral uh, hemisphere. Borders and poles. Next lobes. Lobes will be, will be uh, uh, lobes we will discuss later on. Now on a brain model I want to explain. Now, you can see this is cerebrum comprise of right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemisphere. Partially it is separated by a fissure known as the longitudinal fissure. And they are, below the fissure, they are interconnected by various midline structures. So when we will give a sagittal section, we can separate the two cerebral hemispheres. <coughs> Now you can see in this cerebral hemisphere, this is the frontal pole directed anteriorly, this is occipital pole which is directed posteriorly, and there is another pole which is directed anteriorly called temporal pole. Frontal pole, temporal pole, and occipital, three poles. Then I told you there are three surfaces. This is suprolateral surface, you can see this diagram, suprolateral surface. Now, the suprolateral surface, can you see, it is convex from above downwards and it is also convex from before backwards, the suprolateral surface. Then you can see, this is the medial surface. As compared to the suprolateral surface, it is flat 
and it is vertical. And these are middle-eye structures which interconnect the right and left cerebral hemisphere. Then the inferior or basal surface. Can you see it starts at the frontal pole, include temporal pole, and <coughs> terminate at the uh, occipital pole. This is cerebellum and midbrain, etc. So this is the inferior or basal surface. Can you see it is uneven? frontal pole, then here is temporal and occipital. Now this we divide into orbital part and tentorial part. This orbital part rests on the bony roof of the orbit, this is why it's called orbital part of the inferior surface. And this part from temporal pole to the occipital pole, <coughs> and clearly it rests on the floor of the uh, the floor of the middle kilo fossa and behind here between cerebrum and cerebellum, there is a dural fold known as the tentorial cerebellum. This is why it is called tentorial part, tentorial part of the basal surface of the cerebrum. <coughs> now these were three surfaces, supralateral, medial and basal inferior. Now these surfaces are separated by three borders. Now can you see, this is supramedial border. It starts at the frontal pole and then ends in the occipital pole. Can you see it is separating the supralateral surface from medial surface. <coughs> now from the occipital pole, I told you 5 cm by in front, it is crossed by a sulcus called parieto occipital sulcus. Then come to the infralateral border. Can you see it starts at the frontal pole, include temporal pole and terminate at the uh, the occipital pole. This is infralateral bottle. Now, 5 cm in front of the occipital pole, it is marked by small indentation called pre occipital lines. And second, this orbital part of the, uh, this part of the inferior surface here, infralateral bottle, is also known as the superciliary arch because. At this level, there are cilia of the eyebrows, so this portion is specially known as the superciliary border. So these were surfaces separated by borders and three poles. And in next next lecture, we will divide each cerebral hemisphere into different lobes. Thank you very much.